Would you like to know where to begin studying for your cloud architect or your AWS solutions architect or your Azure solutions architect career? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I've been an enterprise architect for over 25 years, and I've trained people in cloud architecture and solutions architecture and enterprise architecture that are now working at Apple, Amazon, Cisco, Google, IBM, Accenture, Deloitte, KPMG, Capgemini, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Barclays Bank, JP Morgan Chase Bank, uh, Zscaler, Netspoke, Palo Alto Networks, and every prestigious organization you can think of. And uh, people come to me after making so many mistakes on their path to be an architect. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get the technical skills to be a solutions architect or a cloud architect. Now you'll still need to learn the business skills and you can uh, find them out from any webinar that we run every week, but let's talk about the tech skills and where you begin. So what I want you to do when you begin the tech skills is to learn the cloud. Now, I want you to understand the cloud. I want you to understand every element of the cloud. I want you to understand how the cloud works, what the cloud offers, et cetera. Now, I want you to do that by learning the underlying technology. And I'm gonna tell you what that is in a minute. But what I don't want you to do is start with certification. Certification will not teach you any of the underlying technology that you will need. Uh, for a cloud architect or solutions architect role. For example, you might learn uh, how to configure an EC2 instance or how to set up an S3 bucket in an AWS certification. But what's gonna happen on the interview is we're gonna ask you how you would size a virtual machine, how would you determine how much DRAM do you need, how would you determine uh, what kind of CPU you need, how do you determine how many cores versus the CPU frequency. Those types of things are what we're gonna be concerned about as an architect, and you won't get any of that from learning how to click the boxes or do the labs that are as part of your AWS certification, because all they really tell you is about the name of something, which is a proprietary name, it's a marketing name, and how to configure that thing. But what you need to understand is the underlying technology. So understand when we hire, I don't care if you know the name of something and configure it, I care about much, much deeper things for the cloud architect. I care about your pro professional judgment. I care about your ability to understand the impact of a change of the system. I care about your ability to evaluate trade-offs and more importantly, what stuff to use and what not to use and why and the rationale behind it. And here's how you're gonna get that knowledge. Learn the cloud. Now there's another benefit of learning the cloud is if you know the cloud, you know all cloud providers and that way you can work in today's modern environment where 98% of enterprises use more than one cloud. So everything's gonna be multi-cloud anyway, which is gonna mitigate at least 50% of the things you learn in an AWS certification or an Azure certification because they no longer work in multi-cloud. Here's what you need to learn, networking because Oh, the cloud is just somebody else's network and data center, and you're purchasing virtual or renting network and data center services. I want you to learn how routing works and how routers work and how switches work and about how IP, the internet protocol works and how IP packets are, are forwarded on, on, on routers until they get to their destination. I want you to learn some BGP. I want you to learn some network address translation. I want you to understand VPNs, uh, private lines, software defined WANs, content delivery networks, because that's going to be in everything you do in nearly every cloud architecture, solutions architecture, or what have you. Now, I also need you to understand data center architecture, because in many cases, you'll be designing a private cloud or working with private cloud or taking things from private clouds to public clouds. And if you don't know what it is that you're moving, you won't be able to do it anyway. So that means you need to understand uh, high availability design. You need to understand compute, which is servers or vir uh, physical servers, but you also need to understand virtual machines and containers and application virtualization and say function as a service. You need to understand load balancers, for example, and all the types of load balancing that can occur, whether it's DNS-based load balancing or application or network load balancing, what have you. You typically we need to have good knowledge on storage, block storage, object storage, file storage, when to use them, how to performance tune them, and where they fit into the overall architectural equation. And you'll also need to know things like RAID because you'll have to work around performance issues in the cloud. Block storage in the cloud is nowhere as close to as fast as what we had in the data center. So if we've got need fast storage, then we've had it in the data center, we may need to do some workarounds in the cloud and you'll need to know that. 
you will ha need to know a lot about data and databases, things like relational databases, no SQL databases, data warehouses, and when and where to use these and how to scale them, for example. Data lakes, uh, mapping and reduction processes, uh, ETL and the ELT tools and how engineers would use them to get information in and out of systems. Uh, security, data privacy, things like uh, obfuscation, tokenization, classification, encryption, data loss prevention type things. Uh, and typically some things related to security like firewalls, zero trust, IAM, identity federation, SIEM systems, source systems, those types of things. Now, the key is when you learn those things that I just talked about, not only will you know all clouds, but you will be able to evaluate trade-offs and say, oh, the advantages of the virtual machine are this, the advantages of the containers are this, but in this specific reason, I need a use case, I need a virtual machine. Or in another use case, you might use a function as a service, and you'll be prepared to do that when you understand the tech, how the tech works, and how, of course, it fits together. So once you understand the tech, you'll realize that these AWS certifications are merely a vocabulary test. It'll be nothing for you to pass them because if you know what a virtual machine is and how to size it and everything about virtual machines, it's nothing to know how to design an EC2 instance on AWS, which is a virtual machine, a compute engine instance on Google, which is the same identical virtual machine with a different name, or an Azure virtual machine, Oracle calls them a virtual machine, is all the same tech. And you will know how to design it. You know its strengths and weaknesses and its trade-offs. Now, getting the certification afterwards is going to make you shine and get you interviews, which is a wonderful thing. But the problem is people get certified, they don't have any of the skills, any of the knowledge, and they can't get hired. But if you learn the cloud first, oh, and you know the cloud first, now you're in a position that passing these certifications is nothing, and the certifications will get you an interview, and you'll be able to win the interview because you have the technical skills. So that's really the key. You will need other business skills and I'll tell you how you can learn them, but that's where you start. You start by learning the cloud first and then getting certified only after you know the cloud. And that way you'll be certified, which will be fairly easy for you. And you'll actually have the knowledge to be hired. Now, obviously the architecture role still needs uh, some business skills that you can talk, talk about. And I'm gonna invite you to an architecture webinar where we will go over the cloud architect role exactly what we do in the cloud architect role. A hundred percent of all the skills that you need, business skills, leadership skills, tech skills, etc. We'll talk about the steps you need to take to get hired when you're looking to move into an architecture role. And we will, and I will personally answer any career questions you have about cloud architect careers, security architect careers, solutions architect careers, enterprise architect careers. And I've got advised others for a long time and I'm happy to help out help you out on these calls completely free and answer any career questions you may have. To sign up for any of our architecture webinars, look in the description of this video. We typically hold them twice per week. Sign up and then I will meet you there. While you're in the description of this video, I have free guides on how to become a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, or other types of architect. I've got free guides on how to win the interview. So sign up for them, they'll be emailed to you and they're all free. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of our new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gubb signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video or a free webinar where I can meet you face-to-face -face live on Zoom. Take care.